Jay Warner Wallace is a cold case homicide detective who's been investigating cold case murders in Los Angeles County for over a decade. His work has been featured on Fox News, Dateline, and Court TV. Now, we join him as he applies his investigative skills to making a case for Christianity. Thanks for joining us at Cold Case Christianity. I'm Jay Warner Wallace. In this week's episode, I want to examine the question, if you are interested in God, and the vast majority of humans on planet Earth have some interest in a higher power. Statistically speaking, that's already been studied. As a matter of fact, some researchers in some of the most prestigious colleges and universities around the world now claim that the belief in God is ingrained in our DNA. So if you think there is a God, where would you want to start looking? Well, in this episode, I want to show you something from my new book, Person of Interest, which is available now in all the booksellers, in which I talk about how much of Jesus is borrowed, is mentioned, merged, or modified in other theistic systems. This is why I always say if you're interested in theism, the existence of God, you might want to start with Jesus because it turns out Jesus is pretty much part of every other system. Take a look at this presentation from Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, a great church here in Southern California that just talks about the impact that Jesus has had on other views, worldviews, that are grounded in some belief in God. These are five areas, six areas really, of culture. I'm interested in these because I not only think that I could see the impact that Jesus had in these five areas, I can reconstruct the story of Jesus from these five areas. I mean, I could tell you who Jesus was word for word. Most of the New Testament I can reconstruct from these five areas. If I had no Bible, I want to just talk about one tonight, and that is the other world religions. Did you realize the impact that Jesus had on world religion? Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Let's put them on the timeline again for a second. Here's our fuse on this side, our fallouts on that side. There are a number of, of well-known world religions on the fallout side. You probably are familiar with some of these, right? Well, it turns out that all of these religions that follow Jesus, they hat tip Jesus. All of them mention Jesus in some way. They either mention him in their own systems, in their own scripture, or they merge him in, or they change who they are to accommodate Jesus. The religions that follow Jesus have to in some way acknowledge Jesus. But interestingly, on the fuse side, all of these religions also hat tip Jesus the same way. How could that be? Jesus isn't even here yet. How can they modify, merge, or mention Jesus if Jesus hasn't even appeared in history yet? Well, because all of these religions existed after Jesus appeared in history, and once they get to that side of the, to of the timeline, they have to accommodate him. All of these world religions accommodate Jesus. All of them do the same thing. Let's put Jesus on a clock right now, okay? We'll just start earliest in history at 12 o'clock. We'll work around this dial together, okay? I just want to show you how crazy this is. So, for example, Hinduism is very ancient. It's hard to lock down tenets of Hinduism. It can be very fluid depending on what group you're with and where you are in the world worshiping. So it's hard to get generalities. But Hindu leaders, who when they are interviewed, they describe Jesus in a way that's really interesting. They merge him in. They consider him to be a great Hindu, a leader in the Hindu tradition. They consider him to be divine and a source of morality. You can read the writings of Hindu leaders. You will see that they have merged Jesus into their system or they have mentioned him and they have mentioned him in from the Christian scripture. Hindu leaders acknowledge these things happened. If all you had was the writing of Hindu leaders, you would know this about Jesus. As a matter of fact, if I went to the globe and I said, here's where Hinduism prevails, in those areas of the world, you would know something about Jesus because the Hindus talk about Jesus. It's even better than that. There are other, now, Addis is not worshipped anymore, but he was worshipped early in, in the common era. And as he came into the, he was worshipped before the common era, and then when he gets into the common era, Addis is still being worshipped. Only now, they're changing the Addis story because they're adapting it to Jesus. Now suddenly, Addis, his body does not see corruption. That expression's even used. Where's that coming from? Pages of the New Testament. Addis now died. It was, he was never died and resurrected before Jesus appeared. That's why these Jesus mythers will say, well, Addis died and was resurrected. Well, yeah, after Jesus appeared. He stole that from Jesus. Jesus didn't steal that 
that from him. Right? I mean, come on. Heracles, also known as Hercules, Greek or the Roman. Well, he was never described this way until after the appearance of Jesus. Krishna. Now, there are some Hare Krishna that kind of adopts. So this is the ancient, we go back, this is the ancient version of Krishna here. But after Jesus appears, they start to modify their belief system. And they start to make Krishna sound much more like Jesus. This is not part of Krishna worship prior to the appearance of Jesus. Jesus shows up, they start modifying their game plan. And they start to merge Jesus in. They'll say, well, you know, he's one of ours. He's a perfect guru, sent by God, the son of God, Lord. They will acknowledge all that about Jesus. They'll even talk about his sermons. They'll talk about his ministry. They'll mention all of this. They'll mention the crucifixion of Jesus. So no matter where you are, if you're in a Hare Krishna movement in the world today, it turns out you would know something about Jesus just from your own leaders. Mithras, now no one's worshiping Mithras anymore. This is the guy that they said was so much like Jesus. But it turns out that all the stuff that they would say, oh, it's just like Jesus. Well, yeah, because the Mithraic worshipers modified Mithras to match Jesus afterwards. And you'll see this is not something that happened in the first four centuries before Jesus. All of this stuff, now look at Buddhism. In Buddhism, Jesus is acknowledged as a Buddhist leader. In other words, as somebody who is working toward Buddhahood. He's a wise teacher. This is how Buddhists, they actually, the, the, the leaders of Buddhism, they love Jesus. They love his sermons. They love his teaching. They mention all of his teaching, his travels, his miracles, his crucifixion, all of it, even the resurrection. If you're a Buddhist somewhere in the world today, you probably know something about Jesus, not from the pages of Christian scripture, from your own leaders. So look, these are all the ones who preceded Jesus on the time climb. They all modify, merge, or mention Jesus. Now let's get to the ones who are following him. Do you realize how much of Islam is indebted to the Jesus story? In Islam, Jesus is a prophet of much higher uh, value than even Muhammad. And you'll see that this is all of what they say about it. They acknowledge he's born of a virgin. He's a wise teacher. He's a miracle worker. He ascended into heaven. They acknowledge that he's a prophet that would be revered. He's a messenger of God. He'll sit beside God in the final judgment. He will come again. If you are living somewhere where Islam is prevailing, you know something about Jesus just from the Quran. The Baha'i faith is really interesting. This is kind of an interesting, a Baha'u'llah who wrote the scripture on this saw himself as a manifestation of God, but he did like Jesus and he talks a lot about Jesus on the pages of the Holy Scripture for Baha'is. So Jesus is acknowledged in the Baha'i faith. And Baha'u'llah saw himself just like Jesus as a manifestation of God who spoke for God. So if you're a Baha'i someplace in the world, you know something about Jesus just from your Baha'i leaders. And how about Ahmadiyya and the Ahmadi Muslims? Well, it turns out this group of Ahmadi Muslims knows something about Jesus because the Ahmadis actually believe that Jesus came to their part of the world at some point after leaving, after ascending into heaven. He's a prophet of God, born of a virgin, son of God. All of these major details about Jesus' life are affirmed by Ahmadi Muslims, and they consider him to be a wise teacher. So no matter where you are in the world, if you are in a region in which Ahmadi uh, Islam, Ahmadi Muslims exist, you know something about Jesus from your own leaders. And we'll finish with this new age group. This group knows something about, they, they will see Jesus. Now this is very hard to pin down because new age teaching is like all over the map. But most new age teachers will say, think highly of Jesus. And they will see him at least as some example of great spiritualism. Now here's what I want to look at you, uh, show you. No matter, oh, let's layer all the different faith systems now in this map. They're all layered now. Very little part of the globe is untouched by the teaching about Jesus. All these areas of the world know something about Jesus, even if you destroyed every Christian scripture, because they're getting the information about Jesus from the leaders of their own systems. And how much do you know about Jesus? If you destroyed all the Christian scripture, but you didn't want to destroy everybody else's scripture, you would know this much about Jesus. That's a decent, robust description of Jesus that you cannot erase from history because it's being cited by non-Christians. You can reconstruct the story of Jesus from every important aspect of culture. And did you notice something? In this table of prophets and deities and gods, all of these folks, they want to talk about Jesus. They all lean on, build on as a foundation, point to Jesus. Never does Jesus 
return the favor. <laughs> he doesn't. Jesus doesn't budge. Everyone points to Jesus. Jesus, they all, no, he's not one of ways to get to God. He's not one. Jesus says, I am the only way. He says, I am the only, the life, truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Isn't that interesting? He's kind of intolerant, isn't he? Kind of exclusive. All the other gods like him, but he won't play in the sandbox. <laughs> so, when we build a case in front of a jury, we're looking at the fuse and we're looking at the fallout to make our case about what happened in the crime scene. We're doing the same thing here with Jesus. Is there enough information in the fuse and in the fallout to demonstrate what happened? And I think there is. Now, let me, let me just show you some of this fallout that we didn't cover tonight. Do you realize that no person in the history of persons has had a greater impact on literature than Jesus of Nazareth? No one has been written about, no historical figure in the, in the history of persons of interest has been written about as much as Jesus. No one has had as many movies and screenplays written about him as has Jesus of Nazareth. No one, there are Christ figures. They're called Christ figures in fiction where people borrow the attributes of Jesus to shape out their own fictional characters. There's an entire genre of literature called Christ figures. No one, they've got a record of the number of books that mention Jesus. In, the, in, in Congress, in, at, at the National Library. On, do a Google search. Do a Google book search. No one has been written about more Amen. than Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Nobody. He has that, that kind of impact. But it's not just that. It's that he's had the more impact than any other historical figure on the arts. Look, I was classically trained, right? Uh, my training was not in law enforcement. I didn't think I was going to be a cop. My dad was a cop. I decided to be a cop. But my bachelor's degree is in design. And my master's degree is in architecture. I call it architorture. The point is, <laughs> I, I left that to do this. But I will tell you, studying art and architecture, every classic period of art history is dominated by the top three masters, all of which were inspired by Jesus of Nazareth. I don't care if you go right into the current set of, of, of art, histor art history. The top three artists in every category of art history have painted, sketched, sculpted, or crafted Jesus of Nazareth. Nobody else has had that kind of impact on the arts. It's not an impact on the West. It's a global impact. Every nation, every genre, every master, every era. No one's had more impact. And you can reconstruct the story of Jesus. You can reconstruct, I did this in the book. I can reconstruct the entire episode by episode of the Gospel of Mark just from paintings in the first four centuries. You don't need the scriptures to reconstruct the story of Jesus. Are you prepared to destroy the entire history of art? You'd have to to get rid of Jesus. That's how much impact he's had. It's not just that. He's had the same impact on music. Oh, you think you like reading music? You can thank a Christian for that. Christian scales were invented and musical notation was invented by Christians. It turns out I did a research, a search of the top 150 recording artists of all time. Rolling Stone, Billboard, and IMDb. All but two have sung songs about Jesus. Every category, every genre, throughout all of history, no one has had a bigger impact than Jesus and his followers. That's not just that. If you look at the history of education and science, folks, do you realize the top 15 universities in the world today were all founded by Christians? The modern university was started by Christians. From three universities that emerged from the cathedral schools and the monasteries at Oxford, Bologna, and Paris. If you went on the campuses of those top 15 universities in the world and simply look at the buildings, you will find that many of the buildings were old religious buildings used to teach classes. And if all you did was just look at the images and scriptures that are on the buildings in the top 15 universities, you could reconstruct the story of Jesus. Are you prepared to destroy the top 15 university buildings too? Because you're going to have to do that too. Because you cannot erase Jesus that quickly. Oh, science, you realize the science fathers, every major scientific discipline, the science father of that discipline, Christ follower, the scientific revolution, Christ followers. Did you realize that? 
No one's had more impact on the sciences than Christ followers. Over 60% of Nobel Science laureates, Christ followers. Are you ready to give up your position in the sciences? I am not. If all you did was read what the science fathers wrote about Jesus of Nazareth, their Lord, you could reconstruct the most robust description from any aspect of culture from the personal writings of scientists. We cannot give up our place in the sciences. We have owned the sciences, ladies and gentlemen. It's not time to get out now. And finally, I showed you tonight the impact he's had on religion. No one has had more impact than this guy, this person of interest. What person of interest could cause this kind of reaction? Let's go to the first century. That's where time breaks in half. Here are all the other important people of the first century. Look at them all. They lived simultaneous to the same time as Jesus. Look, look at all. These are Jesus' cohorts, okay? These are his, 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 contempor his contemporaries. You don't even recognize half these people. They had no impact on history. But Jesus is the one we're basing our calendar on? None of these guys. I mean, let's take a look at all of the world classic, strongest world leaders from east to west, all through history. These are people you know, some of them. No impact on history like Jesus. These are the world leaders. These are the other religious deities and leaders in history. All of them combined don't have this kind of impact. Your calendar is not based on any of this stuff. These are the other people who claim to be the Jewish Messiah. Did you know there's more than just Jesus who claimed this throughout history? Oh, you didn't know that. Why? Because they don't matter. <laughs> they had no impact on history. <laughs> Yet this guy from some small, tiny, nowhere village raised in another small, tiny, nowhere village who spent the three short years in his ministry, that's it, just as an itinerary preacher, a itinerant preacher. He never traveled more than 200 miles from wherever he lived. He was rejected by the people who were religious. He was hunted by the people who were powerful. He was eventually abandoned by the people who said they were his followers. One disciple betrays him. The other one denies him. He's mocked. He's falsely accused. He never wrote a book or held an office or led an army. He never married anyone. He never had a social media platform, right? <laughs> Instead, he suffers a mock trial, he's humiliated, he's unfairly executed, and then they have to borrow a grave to bury him. And this is the guy who changes history? How in the world could that be? How, why is this guy our person of interest? Oh, 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 maybe it's that he's not a person at all. Right? Because, you know, you think, if God was to descend and enter into his creation, I would expect there to be an impact. And this is exactly what Jesus said he was. Look at the history of Jesus. He spoke as though he was God. The prophets would say, oh, the Lord Almighty says, the Lord says. Jesus never said that. Never. Jesus always said, I tell you. Verily, verily, I tell you. Truly, truly, I tell you. The prophets spoke for God. Jesus spoke as God. And from the very beginning, watch his words. He said, you are from below, I am from above. I am not of this world. He said he came from God. He said he belonged, the angels even belonged. Who can say this? Who says he's got angels that belong to him if you're not God? He said he was equal to God. That's pretty brazen, don't you think? And not only that, to accept worship as a human, you know is blasphemy. Yet over and over and over again, Jesus accepted the worship of humans. He even claimed the name of God, the great I am. It's Jesus that has the authority of God to create the authority of God to forgive. Who can say this? What man could ever say this? He had the authority of God to grant eternal life. He had the authority of God to judge. And even the Muslims believe that he will come and judge the world. So how can this be? It could just be that he is not a person of interest at all, that instead he is the God who should interest you. Okay. 
So here's my question for you. If you're sitting in this room right now because someone, your poor, beloved spouse, long-suffering spouse you have, has been dragging you to church for years, and you're in like the best church you could possibly be in, yet you come every day, every week, out of duty rather than out of actually truly believing that this is who, that Jesus is who he said he was. That ends tonight. Don't come back here. If this isn't obvious to you, Seriously. I can make a case for the deity and historicity of Jesus even if there was not a single page of New Testament available to me. You should be able to see this. Father, I pray that everyone in this room will wake up to your spirit and will see the obvious thing in front of them. Father, I pray this. Come in this fall, join me, Jay Warner Wallace. We'll investigate a real homicide together. We'll also examine the unparalleled impact Jesus had on human history. Does Jesus still matter in a world that's increasingly skeptical of the Bible? Let's discover if Jesus is history's true person of interest. Do you get a sense that censorship is rising? If we simply just reiterate the teaching of Jesus of Nazareth, there's a good chance someone in the culture is gonna see that as intolerant. I'm Jay Warner Wallace, cold case detective and Christian casemaker. If you're concerned like I am about being deplatformed, about being canceled by a culture that has control over your mechanisms to interact with each other, and that's what it is with social media, then please join us at a private community we are building at coldcasechristianity.com. And I want you to join us if you're interested in being mentored, in being discipled in a way that will help you become a better Christian case maker. It's a platform where you can know, is the Bible true and does it matter? Those two things will change your life. Join us at coldcasechristianity.com. You won't regret it. Jay Warner and Susie Wallace have written three kids' books to help children know the truth and defend it in the public square. All three books mirror Jay Warner's adult books, chapter by chapter. And best yet, the kids' books are written as fictional stories that will turn your kids into detectives as they solve mysteries and learn about Christianity. There's also an interactive academy website at casemakersacademy.com where your kids can join other cadets and complete their own academy notebook. Each course has free videos, activity sheets, and more. Your young readers can even earn their own junior detective graduation certificates and appear on the honor cadet wall. Be sure to visit casemakersacademy.com to learn more. In addition to Jim's daily blog and weekly podcasts and videos, Jim continues to write books designed to help you become a better Christian casemaker. These resources will help you defend what you believe and share it with others. So there you have it. This is why I think the best thing we can do for people who are interested in God, and even those people who are would say they're not interested in God, once they start to develop their theories about the universe, they end up slipping into some form of metaphysical uh, explanations that, that really involve some type of extra natural cause. It's really hard. This is why I think in Romans 1, Paul says that those of us who look at the creation and deny a creator have no excuse. So I think there's a reason why we all look. As a matter of fact, I told you about that research done. In my new book, Person of Interest, I actually cite through all of the case studies that have been done at universities around the world. And those universities will tell you, people who research in those universities will tell you that young people are inclined to infer the existence of a creator from the creation in a way that seems quite reasonable. 
given what they see. And this starts very early. This is why the vast majority of people on planet Earth believe in some form of higher power. I just think they ought to probably start with Jesus, given that all these other systems, even the systems that begin before Jesus, like Buddhism, Hinduism, Krishna, these are systems that somehow incorporate Jesus into their worldview, even though Jesus makes no room for anybody else. Look, when I did the research on this years ago, it struck me that the impact of Jesus globally is pretty uh, great, just if nothing else, based on the teaching of other systems in their holy scripture or in their world leaders, their, their religious leaders. They've found a way to incorporate Jesus into their teaching. Why? Look, I didn't say this in the presentation on the, at, at Calvary Chapel, so I'll say it here uh, now. Um, Sometimes when you're working a, a series of uh, murder suspects, let's say you have a case where you think, ah, oh, there's like five guys here I'm working. Eventually, one is going to emerge based on his unique nature. In other words, you start off with five or six guys and some, all of them have some similar problems that eliminate them from the crime scene. They don't match the DNA. They have some similarities and they, they actually don't fit what the, the information that I have, the facts that I've gathered from examining the evidence. Then there's this guy who actually is unique in the sense that he's available to do the crime. He has a motive. The other ones don't. He has a set of unique um, uh, facts about him that separate him from the other four or five. That guy usually ends up being our suspect because of his unique nature when compared to the other suspects in the group. Now think about that. All of these uh, usual suspects in world religions are all offering a system in which they encourage you to work to attain the highest level that God has for you. If that's to be in his presence, if that's to be exalted as God, whatever it may be. You have to work and your own deeds are weighed and your deeds are measured so that really none of those folks in those systems could say with certainty they're going to be going to heaven because they don't know if their works actually measure up enough. Then there's this oddball, Jesus, who's arguing that it's nothing you could do anyway. It's just what he has already done for you. He is so unique in that fashion. And as you saw in our presentation, he says there's no room for anybody else. It's I'm the only way to the Father. He's unique. He stands out. He is the one suspect that makes sense given the evidence. Hope that helps you. And if you want to get the book to learn a lot more, over 400 illustrations with only 300 pages, that's more illustrations than we have pages. Take a look for Person of Interest, Why Jesus Still Matters in a World that Rejects the Bible. And you can find it at our website at personofinterestbook.com. Thanks so much for joining us this week. I'll see you next week right here at Cold Case Christianity. To hear more from Jay Warner Wallace, please visit coldcasechristianity.com. For more information on this week's topic, visit youtube.com slash coldcasechristianity with Jay Warner Wallace. Thank you for joining us on this Cold Case Christianity broadcast.